Welcome back to Case of Confessions. Today's confession is, I had been dating my boyfriend for about three years when one night he started drinking and telling me repeatedly he was a creep and had a secret he could never tell anyone. I had a sinking feeling that what he would say would change our relationship. Eventually, I convinced him to tell me and told him I would never judge him. He told me I would leave him for what he was going to say, and I promised I wouldn't. In my mind, I thought the worst thing he could say was he had cheated on me, but boy, was I wrong. His first cousin, who was the same age as him, had sexually assaulted my boyfriend's younger sister a few years prior. No one in the family believed her, and when we started dating, it was understandably eating her alive. She was both traumatized from the event and from the fact that no one believed her, and he was still involved in all of the family activities. I never understood why my boyfriend didn't believe her and try to protect her, but he often told me it was because she was dramatic, and who would want to do that to a fat person anyway? I always thought it was strange, though, because despite telling her that she was making it up, my boyfriend also hated his cousin, and that confused me. My boyfriend confessed to me that between the age Welcome back to part two. My boyfriend confessed to me that between the ages of 13 to 17, my boyfriend would go in the back room at family events and he and the cousin would take turns going down on each other, which was both incestual and gay. My boyfriend's cousin had disclosed to my boyfriend that he sexually assaulted his little sister because he thought she would like it just like my boyfriend had liked it. Needless to say, my boyfriend felt guilty, but despite this, he decided to pretend his sister was lying about her sexual assault so that he wouldn't have to admit to his family what he had done with his cousin. As soon as I heard what my boyfriend had to say, I was terrified of him. To be willing to discredit your sister to that degree to save your own face made him the worst human being I'd ever laid my eyes on. I couldn't believe this was the man I had loved for years of my life, but with knowing what I knew, I couldn't even look at him and immediately broke things off. I have contemplated for years about telling my ex's sister the truth, but just worry she couldn't handle it. And although I despise my ex, but I couldn't bear to hurt his sweet sister, who already has been alienated from nearly her entire family for trying to tell the truth of her sexual assault. Welcome back to Cakes and Confessions. Today's confession is the teddy bear. This is a confession to me from my mother. So many years ago, I was sat around the dinner table with my mom and she broke down in hysterical laughter, tears and all, and told me she had something to tell me. She couldn't live with the lie anymore. When I was a little girl, I used to have a child-sized teddy bear, originally named Big Bear, who lived under my bed to protect me from monsters. I loved this bear. He was my protector and my best friend. My mom, however, hated this bear. In her mind, he was one of those cheap bears you can win at the fairgrounds, stuffed full of straw, but to me, he was perfect. When I was eight years old, we moved house during this move. Big Bear went missing, believed stolen. My parents assured me that they had contacted the police and they were on the case. Eventually, time passed and I forgot about Big Bear and life moved on. Coincidentally, at the same time of Big Bear's mysterious disappearance, I was in my school play, Teddy Bear's Tea Party, and my role was Teddy Bear number two. My costume was amazing. Welcome back to Cakes and Confessions. This is part two of yesterday's confession, the teddy bear. My costume was amazing. It was a handmade, full zip-up teddy bear costume, complete with a cute little bonnet with a pink bow. I was the cutest teddy bear in the whole show, confirmed by my grandparents. Now you've probably guessed the terrible secret that my mother has carried with her all these years. My amazingly cute teddy bear costume was Big Bear. She had murdered him, pulled out his insides, and cut his head off. She then cut off his face, attached a bow to his head, and made me wear his cold, dead, very cute and fluffy teddy bear skin. I think she finally caved and confessed because she could no longer live with the guilt. I was and still am traumatized. R.I.P. Big Bear. R.I.P. Welcome back to Cakes and Confessions. This is definitely going to be a multi-part video, so if you don't like them, then skip this one. There are certain things I told myself I would take to my grave because they are just so shameful I can't imagine people knowing them, but I find solace in anonymously confessing things. When I was 15, I worked at a restaurant and had become close with some workers around my age. During this time, my guy best friend would come frequently at the end of the night and hang out with everyone. I grew up in a very small town. Like, my graduating class was 120 people, so basically everyone knew each other and we were all friends. One day, my coworker came in and looked extremely distressed, and she confessed to me that my best friend had snuck in her window the night before and had essayed her and then quickly snuck out, and I was the first person she had told. I was taught to never question these kinds of things, so I helped her call the police, and I also helped her tell her family so they could work through things together, and then I took a step back. I was absolutely floored my guy best friend would have done such a thing. He was the greatest guy I knew and did nothing but look out for people, but still I knew to believe the girl. Welcome back to part two of yesterday's Cakes and Confessions. 
I was absolutely floored my guy best friend could have done such a thing. He was the greatest guy I knew and did nothing but look out for people, but still I knew to, do, to believe the girl in these situations. My dad asked me to not be in contact with him anymore and to essentially stay out of things, so I did what I was told. Through my work, I would hear the ins and outs of the case, and over the years, my coworker's story kept changing, but I just kept telling myself to stay out of it. When I was 20, my guy best friend contacted me and swore he hadn't done it and that he needed a character witness for the case. I told him I couldn't and that I needed to stay out of things. At the end of the trial, my coworker confessed that she had made everything up, but at this point I was living in a new place and completely distanced from my old life, so I had only heard about this through friends of friends and it was mentioned casually and then we moved on. My old guy friend had been registered as a sex offender because of the claim during the trial, and although the claim had turned out to be false, for some reason his name still appeared when you searched the database. This comes with a lot of implications and essentially had...